I've been talking to students in Cardiff who have been dishing the dirt about a company called CPS Homes. CPS described themselves as Cardiff's largest estate and lettings agent and is run by Barry and Emma James. There they are. <laughs> we spoke to numerous students who have rented accommodation through CPS Homes but have been deducted hundreds of pounds from their deposits for alleged damage. When they try and get more information from Barry and his team, they are often ignored for months on end and have to either accept the deductions or take the case to the official body to try and claw back their money. So what's going on here? Turn your eye holes in this direction. So we rented with CPS in our second year of university and when we moved out, all this trouble started with our deposits. They have charged us off our deposit for general wear and tear that we didn't cause and damages that we also didn't cause. And they've just been rude and uncooperative the entire time. Lucy, Lizzie and their housemates were charged for 21 different essential repairs, totalling £843. They were told that they'd get none of their money back until they agreed to those deductions. It's five months on and they're still waiting. Let's have the top five of CPS essential repairs that haven't been repaired. At number five, 50 quid for a stained mattress. Lucy and Lizzie were charged for it, but did CPS fix this? No, they just turned the mattress over. Rising to four, 50 quid for small dents in the patio door. We checked, they're still there. At three, 50 quid to fix a chip and a blue tack mark. It's still there. Bubbling under at number two, 60 pounds to reseal the showers. Not been done. And this week's number one, 60 quid for a carpet stain. Is it still there? What do you think? Wouldn't be number one, would it? <laughs> Lucy and Lizzie had been ignored for months, so I gave them one of my undercover team and sent them back into CPS to see what was going on with their deposits. Joe, hello. Nice to meet you. Come nice take a seat. Too. Yes, thank you. Hope you don't mind. I've got a bottle of Sambuca. I'm going to do a shot every time CPS do something wrong. OK, what have we got? First question, 21 different deductions. But why aren't there 21 invoices or quotes? Yeah, because that's the compensatory figures. So what that means is the landlord's claiming compensation for damages that he hasn't decided to get rectified as of yet. So it's a contribution towards the eventual replacing or fixing of the items. It doesn't really work like that. The deposit belongs to the tenants. Before a landlord can make any deduction, he's got to prove he's suffered that loss. What is this compensation all about? And as far as I'm concerned, this could easily be fair wear and tear. They're students. That's, that's got to be wrong. <laughs> Small scuffs and stains count as general wear and tear, but a landlord shouldn't charge a tenant for them. And some of those charges are for damage Lucy and Lizzie are adamant they didn't cause. So, yes, the tenant's responsibility to prove that they haven't caused damage. If we assume that they have, they need to show that they have Right. Yeah. That's interesting. OK. That's the case with all agencies and all landlords. Sure that you haven't. That, that, that is the case of Is it? It isn't. That is completely wrong. They seem to be forgetting that the onus has got to be on the landlord. Mm -hmm. I like the onus is on the landlord. I'm going to get that on a jumper. And I did! Sidebar, Lucy and Lizzie were given two invoices. The first was for a cleaning company. But we discovered that the cleaning company is owned by the sister of Barry James the CEO of CPS. We called this cleaning company 20 times, and each time our calls weren't answered. It's almost as if the company doesn't exist. The second invoice is for a handyman. Well, who's this? Turns out the handyman is married to the cleaner, making these two in-laws. But even weirder still, the house that Lucy and Lizzie were renting is owned by the handyman and the cleaner. What a coincidence. And I wonder what Robert will make of that. So what do you make of that? That's extremely unprofessional. If there's a conflict of interest or a potential conflict of interest, you've got to come clean and tell the tenants on day one. You've got to tell them before they even sign the agreement. <laughs> and don't forget, a landlord should get their deposits sorted out within ten working days. And didn't these guys take months to get their act together? That is clearly wrong. They did. Oh. <laughs> I'd like us to go to this. This is the CPS student headquarters. OK. We're going to hold a rave on behalf of all of the students. And best thing, you're going to be DJing. Have you DJed before? <laughs> Not really. But, hey, I probably can. I hope so. Yeah. 
You just press play. Yeah. Be fine. Should we go? Let's do this. Hello, how you doing? Um, I don't know if um, Mr. James is around at all. If you just sit. So she's just going to get in. We know he's in there because he went for lunch. Hi. How are you, Jamie? Lovely to meet you. He had a milkshake. Oh, is he not? He's not here. They're saying he's not here. We know Barry's there because we watched him go in. Why are you hiding from us, Barry? Hi, Joe Lysett was left no option but to go in. Armed with a track for tonight's rave, I pretended to just bump into Jamie like they do on Made in Chelsea, but with better acting. Jamie Bloody Lang, what are you doing here? Hey, buddy. How Hello. are you? Hi. How are you? Yes, what are you doing here? I'm about to DJ at a rave. At a rave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, I've, so I've, I've made a track that, um, that I think you'd love for the rave. Really? Do you want to hear it? Yeah, OK. My track is an absolute banger. This is it. Designed to educate CPS on tenants' rights. Know that before you move in, the landlord must give you a copy of the gas safety certificate. 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 What do you think of this? Know that your rent cannot be increased. But before the track could really kick off, floor. boss man Barry slipped away and made a runner for his car. Barry! Do you want to come to our rave later? We're having a rave. Come on, you, why don't you talk to us? Why are you frightened why of us? Why don't you send in your queries? We office? will, we will, but and I want to know. They will tell you why... Why can't you tell us you're the head of the company? I don't deal with it. I don't deal with everything. Well, let me tell you what not, we found. That's right. We found that you're ripping off dozens of students. Lucy and Lizzie want their £843 back. This is a nice car. Has that been paid for with ripping off students? See ya. Drive safe. So that's it. Barry's driven off. Which is a shame, because he's going to miss the rave. What happened? And it's going to happen right outside his office. Oh, it's I spoke to Barry! What did he say? He didn't want to speak to me. Did he not? <laughs> no, he didn't. Let's go and have a rave. Hiya! <laughs> know that before you move in, the landlord must give you a copy of the gas safety certificate. 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 Know that you don't need to get the property professionally cleaned if it hadn't been professionally cleaned before you moved in. You should hear about your deposit within 10 days of the tenancy ending. 10 days. You should hear. 10 days. Your deposit. Know that your landlord shouldn't charge you for normal wear and tear. 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 We got in touch with CPS with all our findings and they said... For 20 years, CPS Homes has successfully managed several thousand properties providing quality accommodation for renters. We are satisfied that the four cases raised in the programme have already been dealt with via our rigorous complaints procedure and through independent adjudication. We therefore feel the rave and filming were disproportionate to the nature and small number of complaints. Super soz, my rave was so big, babes. <laughs> CPS may think they did nothing wrong, but Lucy and Lizzie have actually now been awarded hundreds of pounds of their deposit back. And Lucy and Lizzie are here tonight. Girls, how do you feel? Yeah, really great. Good, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> On top of that, Cardiff Council contacted us to say they have just audited CPS and have issued them with an action-needed warning. Two years ago, I launched a deep and long-running investigation into Airbnb. This board has all my hard-hitting evidence and a built-in table for snacks. Mummy can't fight injustice without her easy peelers. I've spoken to loads of people who've lost thousands of pounds using Airbnb. Like Peter Stone. He booked a gorgeous Menorcan villa on Airbnb, messaged the host a few times, and everything seemed legit. But then he was persuaded to pay 11,000 euros direct to the host, who then disappeared. Airbnb said there was nothing they could do for Peter as he paid off-platform. But thankfully, soon after, he got back all 11,000 euros after I spoke to Airbnb. Well, I didn't speak to them, it was my producers, and there was a bit of pressure from Channel 4 as well. I'm not going to go into the full details of how the show works. Now, I couldn't catch Peter's scammer, but Airbnb was awash with them. Back to me in the future, please. Oh, <laughs> that tickles. And that's how I first encountered this guy. His name is Finn. Fit, right? <laughs> He's certainly my type. And that type is potentially criminal. <laughs> Back 
in 2018, he was advertising these 12 luxury properties across some of the poshest postcodes in London as Airbnb rentals. But it turned out that Finn didn't actually have the keys to any of these properties. We know this because we checked land registry records and contacted some of the real owners. One of those houses belonged to none other than pop princess and face of Pantene, Ellie Golding. Guess what? Ellie had never heard of Finn either, and she definitely hadn't given him her keys. He's got no right to let my home home home. <laughs> He's got no right to let my home home home. As much as I admired Finn for his bare-faced cheek, as well as what I imagine are some succulent abs, I had no choice but to report him and his fraudulent activity to Airbnb. They took Finn off their website straight away, and they said to us, Fake listings have no place in our community. We have removed Finn. We work 24-7 to protect our community and prevent fraud. If that's true, then explain the following. <sighs> He's back! Despite me giving Airbnb evidence of his dastardly scamming ways, they allowed Finn to return just weeks later. He's now listing 42 properties on Airbnb, and one of them is still Ellie Golding's Pantene-soaked love nest. I know he's just one man, one incredibly fit man, but he's symptomatic of all the scammers all over Airbnb's platform, and I was determined to take him down. I booked Finn's listing of Ellie's pad, paying £5,335 for a two-week stay. But just as I packed the essentials and was about to head off, I got a text that really urinated on my chips. Hi, Joe. We're having a boiler issue with the flat you've booked. However, I've got a similar flat. I can host you here tomorrow until the boiler is fixed or for your whole stay. So sorry about this. Let me know your thoughts. Best regards, Finn. I'm absolutely furious. Let's go. Come on. Time to see for myself what my £480 a night pad is really like. Not Ellie, more smelly. Quite a mucky window, that. Less Ellie Golding, more Ellie Moulding. Oh, that's hot. It's less Ellie Golding and more Ellie scolding. That is an excellent joke. Oh, 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 that's so grim. I'm going to need a full bleach after this. Practically choking on my Pantene, we cancelled our stay after just one night. But Finn pocketed more than £400 for that little stay. Oh, Finn, you are as wicked as you are beautiful. Just like Ben Shepherd. <laughs> Airbnb might have let him get away with it, but I won't. I've made another booking with Finn. And seeing as he's got boiler issues, I thought I'd lend him a little helping hand. Maybe he needs a plumber. Dressed as the most famous plumber of all time, armed with a new working boiler, a thirst for justice and a cute hat, would today be the day I finally caught up with Finn? As Luigi skillfully parked the Mario Kart, it was time to send in my undercover dream boots. In you go, poppets. Good luck. Finn could appear at literally any moment. Anything could happen. Yeah. Someone's coming. Are they coming? Yeah. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, oh hi. We, just, we were expecting to meet Tin here. Yeah. yeah. No sign of Finn, just lots of his buddies. Hi, George. This is Tin. Hi, Tin. Um, we were expecting to meet you here. I thought we were meeting you here too. Get him on video call, please. Hello. And then, for the first time, there Finn really was. Be still, my beating heart. It was time to ditch the starry-eyed plumber gig and turn up the heat on Finn. And this flat, how many how many bedrooms in both of these flats? Excuse me. Finn, this is Joe Lysett. I'm off the television. I have been tracking you for the last two years. I'm not sure you own all of the 42 properties that you list on Airbnb. For example, this property here, it's, it's listed on your Airbnb, but you don't own it. Ellie Golding owns it, the international pop star. Why are you listing properties that you don't own? That's really weird. But his wingmen had heard enough. What? I was hoping to speak to Finn. Did you know...? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on? I don't know where you're playing. You can just go away from here like this, but nothing. No, no, this is public property. I, I can stay. Here. I don't know. Why, why are you recording the man? Because I think you work for Finn. No, I don't work for Finn. But why are you so annoyed about me standing in the road then? I know, weird, what you're doing like. I just could you deliver a message to Tim? Mm -hmm. Could you could you tell him I love him? And I hope to meet him one day. 
Following our recent visit, Airbnb sent us a message which will be read beautifully now by Jess Phillips MP. We have zero tolerance for fake or misleading content. We have permanently removed this host from our platform. We have invested 115 million in measures to build trust on Airbnb, and more than two million guests stay in Airbnb on any given night. Thanks, Brian. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Great news! This campaign to get Airbnb to clean their act up, which involved two years of investigating, dressing up as a plumber and treating Dublin to a tone-deaf drag act, has finally culminated in the following promises from the company. Infamous bait and switcher Finn has finally been kicked off the platform for good. Call me babes! Peter Stone has been compensated for the thousands of pounds he lost and they've pledged to invest millions into combating fraud. Hopefully, all this means that holidaymakers everywhere will never be scammed out of their hard-earned cash on Airbnb ever again! Yeah.